Lionel Messi, have you heard of him? Yes, of course you have. You are a human. So I did this video. The entire history of the Premier League. Holy sh- So... Uh, part two. I get no Born on the 24th of June, 1987, mother, Cilia Maria Suchettini, a very nice lady, and his father, Jorge Orazio Messi, I think that's how you say it. Where is he from? Rosario. The little boy from Rosario, Santa Fe. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, guessing ahead ourselves. Oh, yeah, also, I'm very sorry, I, I did forget. If you guys want the best and easy ideas for Christmas, my own design company, Mazzola Designs, the UK, the link's at the top of the description, everything is made by myself, the website, the emails, everything is made by myself. It means a lot for you guys support Cord Xmas for 15% off all items. We've got a ton of messy items too that you guys may enjoy Sorry, it's just one little plug. It's not for some random sponsor. It's my, it's my own company So I appreciate you guys support and let's get back into it Believe it or not Messi actually has three other siblings You just never know of them because they simply are irrelevant. Sorry if you listen to this I'm irrelevant too. his oldest brother Rodrigo his other brother Matthias and his younger sister Maria That is a photo of them together. Lucky bastard. Imagine your brother just being me me messy. Oh, they're living a good life. What about his other family? He's got Italian roots, as he's from Argentina. They, they pretty much are vastly Italian. Other than McAllister, he's definitely Scottish. So he's got Italian and Catalonian roots, meaning that he could have played for Italy. Growing up in Argentina in the late 80s and early 90s, it was as um, chaotic as you would expect. The entire country basically had no money. An economic collapse, hyperinflation of the peso, and riots was basically every single day. Meaning that most middle to lower class families basically couldn't afford anything. La Polga. No, that's not an insult, or it could have been an insult, maybe. This was Lionel Messi's nickname when he was like, you know, five. Just like most kids in South America, or really across anywhere across the world, they played football. And especially in South America, playing football was seen as your way out of your current economic situation. It was seen as your chance to get out and to make something of yourself. This is something that you find with most, or if not all, South American footballers. Very few are actually raised from wealth. They all come from pretty lower class backgrounds, and they all see it as their one-way ticket to stardom and well, you know, not being from the streets. His nickname, La Pulga, means the flea. Uh, basically meaning that he was very, very small. Some may see this as an insult, but I don't think he actually cared. He only ever played football with his brothers. Now there is a story that Cilia, Lionel Messi's grandma said, Lionel, one day you'll be the best football player in the world when he was like five. Let's believe it for a good story, right? She had real belief in Messi and because money was very hard to come by back in these days, she spent a lot of money of hers to get Messi's his first ever boots and practically begged and demanded that Messi would play for this football club. One story of his childhood came by like this. Messi and his entire family went to go watch him football involving his brothers Rodrigo and Matias. They were playing for Grandoli and they were a player short as one couldn't go. They needed a player to fill the squad and Messi was with his parents and was available to play if they needed him. He was playing against boys much older than him. Allegedly in his first game when he wasn't even meant to play, he took the ball, dribbled across the entire pitch and created a goal. From that moment, he officially became a player of the Grandoli team and actually helped them winning their first ever trophy. Here's a photo of that. His first ever coach was Salvador Apraccio and I'm sure that he's definitely made a book somewhere about it or a documentary. Let me Google this. Oh no, he, he passed away in 2008. And he looks like such a nice man. Oh, God damn it. My day's ruined. Rest in peace, Salvador Aparicio. From his time playing at Grand Dolly, he then took the step up in his younger years, playing for Newell's Old Boys, and a team that you probably are much more aware of. The coach, Aparicio, demanded that Messi had to go to an academy and to actually get him a better opportunity to showcase his talents. And it was not that hard to join, as he was a supporter of Newell's Old Boys, and he joined the Rosario Club at only six years of age. However, a tragic event happened in the Messi family. His grandmother, Celia Oliveira Sutatini, passed away. She passed away in 1998, when Messi was only 10 years of age. To Messi, she was the one that always saw his talent before anyone else did, and was the reason why he got a chance so early. Hence why Messi's iconic celebration, where he points both his fingers up towards the sky, that is the reason why he does that celebration. To each goal that he has scored, he remembers her by pointing towards the sky to his grandmother. Now that 
is class. Lionel Messi played for Newell's old boys for six years and he scored almost 500 goals. Granted, it is youth football, so goals happen a lot more often in that league, but still, like, that's still like four or five goals a game for six years. His youth team was so good that they actually had a nickname by the Argentine Ultras called the Machine of 87, as their team were undefeated, winning pretty much every single game, and the entire year of their squad were born in 1987. So they were called the Machine of 87, with most of their games for a youth team gaining large crowds as his photo showcases. And a cool little fact, this machine of 87 team has a WhatsApp group to this very day. And it was around this time that people realized that Messi was still quite small. Messi throughout his entire life always was pretty small compared to his peers, but most people felt like, well, when he hits puberty, eventually he will catch up. However, that sadly never happened, as when he hit the age of 10, as when he hit the age of 11, 12, 13, he didn't get any bigger. He simply stopped growing. His family, his coaches, his teammates were all concerned about what was going on with Messi as being so small and therefore weaker in a sport like football as he wasn't just small, he was extraordinarily small with his bone structure not really being the same strength to his peers. They finally took him to a doctor and found out finally what was going on with Messi. GHD, no that isn't a aftershave, that is growth hormone deficiency disease. This disease can be treated but it does cost a pretty penny, over $1,000 per month to help get the medication that he needs. Neuro's old boys, his team at the time, agreed to contribute towards his medication, but later abandoned out on a promise. Without the medication that he needs to help him get to the level of his peers, Messi's career could have ended before it even started. But by some twist of fate, his grandfather, who is from Catalonia, somehow got a way to get treatment from FC Barcelona. At the time, this wasn't just some way to get Messi a contract at a football club, this was much more. This was actually a way to fuel him to get the treatment that he needs for his life in general. This was much more than just a, a contract for a football club. His grandparents somehow had a way to contact a member of management at FC Barcelona, seeing if they would have a look at Messi. And it was actually Charlie Resach that wanted to sign Messi almost immediately. However, the Barcelona board of directors refused. This was due to, at the time, European football clubs couldn't sign players at the age of Messi. That was only 13, because that Seems kind of weird. On the 14th of December 2000, Newell's old boys issued an ultimatum for Barcelona. As Barcelona claimed that they wanted to sign Messi, but simply weren't able to. So Messi's father gave them a choice. Either they sign him now, or they take him towards Real Madrid and see if they would like to get him. They simply couldn't risk letting him go away. However, due to the sudden situation, they didn't have the facilities to do it professionally. So therefore they got the next best thing a napkin. The famous Lino Messi's contract on a napkin was formed as Charles Resach got together with his father to confirm that Messi would sign to FC Barcelona. And at the age of 13, Lino Messi and his entire family packed their bags and moved from Argentina to Spain. His first year at Barcelona didn't go too well, as he barely even played for Barcelona in his first year. This was due to a transfer conflict that Newell's old boys and Barcelona had. This means that he was not able to play in any competitive games and only friendlies. This means that he barely played any football and barely was able to play with his teammates. Lionel was already a quiet kid, however this only made him much more reserved. Stories goes that he barely ever spoke to his teammates and he was believed to be a chronic Lorna as quoted by some. Due to his lack of first team football and the frustration between the contract situation, he started having homesickness and was thinking about moving back home as the entirety of Messi's family went back to Argentina other than his father as they were only allowed to have a limited stay in Spain. 12 entire months went by but Messi finally got the green light from the Spanish Football Federation that he was able to play in competitive games. Messi was now officially a part of La Masia. In his youth setup, he played the likes of Gerard Piquet and Cesc Fabregas. This was labelled as a baby dream team. This is an actual quote that they called them. They were winning games. Obviously, they're Barcelona. They immediately got interest away overseas. Cesc Fabregas went on to join Arsenal. Gerard Piquet went on to leave to go to Manchester United. And Messi also had an offer from Arsenal to join Cesc. 
However, he refused to leave and stay at Barcelona. Imagine Messi at Arsenal, Christ. The first big moment in Messi's career came in a 2005 FIFA World Youth Championship, as Argentina went on to win the competition, beating Nigeria in a final, and Messi got the best player in the tournament and the golden boot. This was the first time that people started hearing the name Lionel Messi back in this early 2000s. Keep in mind, football back in these days were at its peak, I'll be honest. In that 04-05 Barcelona team, they had the following. They had Samuel Eto'o, Ronaldinho, Sebastian Larsson, Deco, Iniesta, Xavi, with Frank Rijkaard as manager. This is not an easy team to get into, especially when you're attacking competitors or, you know, Sebastian Larsson, Samuel Eto'o and Ronaldinho and shortly to be joined with Thierry Henry. He got slowly integrated into the first team training sessions and non-surprisingly, Ronaldinho became his mentor, even to this day calling Messi his little brother. Messi's first ever game for Barcelona for the first team came against Jose Mourinho's Porto and then came the 2005-06 season. This was Messi's breakthrough year. It didn't take him much time to really settle in and immediately made himself an instant impact, making his first ever La Liga debut on October 16th, 2005 in a match against Espanyol. Despite only being 18 years of age, he played as if he's been playing for multiple years. However, it took him longer than expected, you would think, to get his first goal for Barcelona in the league. On May the 1st, 2006, he scored against Albacete. Albacete? This made him the youngest ever goal scorer for Barcelona at the time. I remember watching Sky Sports and it had like La Liga shows, and I would have been like eight at the time, but it was just always on in the back. Background. And I just remember us watching like Ronaldinho and Messi and uh, the, chem the chemistry that he had was so humbling to watch and to have Ronaldinho as your mentor is it kind of explains a lot about how good he is now. This year marked the beginning of his start, ending the season at the age of 18, playing 25 games, scoring eight goals and gathering five assists. And despite Barcelona making it all the way to the Champions League final and winning it, sadly he was not available as he had a torn muscle injury. Also, fun fact, he had his first ever debut for the Argentine national team on the 17th of August, 2005. It went awful. He played the game for one minute, if that, and got red carded for this. He had a red card in the first minute of his entire Argentine career. Imagine that. And fun fact, that was his only ever red card in his entire career up to like, you know, he was like 36. So one red card for like the entirety of his career with one minute of game played. Incredible. I get no the 06 or 7 seed. I mean, I just need to say one word, don't I? Getafe. I mean, you you already know, like, like you you already know what I'm gonna say. You already know the the goal. You already know the the, the kit, that bright green, luminous kit that they had. It is itched in my memory forever. I may buy that kit, you know. He got integrated into the team a lot more this year with 36 games played, 17 goals and three assists, which again for a 19 year old at Barcelona isn't really normal. Of course, nowadays with football, modern football, we kind of see a player scoring, oh, only 17 goals. That's not that amazing, you know, compared to like Mbappe, but you know, this is Barcelona at the age of 19. A front three of Samuel Eto'o, Ronaldinho and Messi a midfield of Xavi, Iniesta, and Deco. It was a fun time, and his first ever individual awards started coming up. Named in a Champions League Team of the Year, a finalist for the Ballon d'Or, and in the FIFA World Player of the Year Awards. Who won the 2007 Ballon d'Or? I'm gonna have you guess. Do you know? You probably may have forgot, but that's quite sad. It's Kaka. Messi actually came third, with Cristiano Ronaldo in second place. Little did they know that this is all we're going to hear about for the next near two decades. I get no so in the 07-08 season, this was the last year for Ronaldinho, the last year for Frank Rijkaard, Thierry Henry just come in, Lionel Messi, decent year, you know, 16 goals and 16 assists, I mean, it's okay, it's okay, you know, but um, what happened the next year? Ah, right. I get no 38 goals, 19 assists, you know, that I think it's the number 10 shirt. With Ronaldinho now out of the Barcelona team, some shoes were needed to be filled, and Messi, in time, filled those shoes very nicely. How did he do in the Champions League? Ah, th yeah, they won it. Who scored? Ah, uh, yeah, you know who. Who won the Ballon d'Or? Yeah, you know who. With over double the amount of points compared to, you know who. Yeah, sorry, um, Ronaldo um, was second place. 
with less than half the points of Messi. Messi became the first Argentine-born player to win the award since Sivori back in 1961. So this was a big deal. And most people knew that this was not going to be the last. The previous year, they were third place in the league and knocked out of the Copa del Rey and Champions League. And in this year, they did the treble. Champions League, Copa del Rey, La Liga, boom, boom, boom. And oh wait, who was the manager? Oh, it's Pep Guardiola. Wow, I'm, I'm stunned. I did not see this occurring. I mean, their team was, you know, it, it, it was decent, you know, like Dani Alves, Xavi, Pique, Puyo, Eto, Valdez, Messi, Yaya Torre, Iniesta, Henri, Marquez, Busquets, just, you know, normal players, you know, that you'll see normal. But hey, you know, he had a decent year last year, he scored 23 goals in the league, it's decent, you know, it's fine, you know. Next year we can't do much better, you know. I get no right. So he scored 34. <laughs> keep, keep in mind as well, he, he's, he played pretty much the entirety of his time of his career as a right winger. He's not even a striker. And when he did play as a centre forward, um, he scored 11 goals out of 8 games. So it was at this moment that Messi became a problem. The iconic moments, the iconic games, the big moments, big games, big players. Real Madrid taking the absolute He's almost scoring a goal a game, 47 goals in 53 games in all competitions. However, in the Champions League, it didn't go to plan as they did get knocked out by Inter Milan in the semi-finals. He did play at Arsenal. Sorry, Arsenal fans, but um, yeah, he scored four. But what is that? It is the FIFA World Cup. Messi after scoring almost 50 goals in a year. I mean... This can only go one way. World Cup 2010 South Africa. Messi, you would think at the peak of his powers, but he's not even close yet. Surely he's going to make this competition his own. I mean, he's playing against Nigeria, South Korea, Greece in the group stage. He's got to score at least four. He scored none um, in the entire tournament and not out by Germany in the quarterfinals. 4-0. It didn't really go to plan. Messi by no means were god awful in the World Cup, but it, it didn't really reach the expectations that people really thought was going to happen at this tournament. Of course, as we all know, Spain went on to win the entirety of this World Cup and Barcelona were very happy. Again, managed by Pep Guardiola, no one is surprised. Yes, they won the La Liga, which is okay, but it's, it's Barcelona now. You, you kind of want a bit more. Eto is gone and here comes Latan Ibrahimovic. How was the Ballon d'Or? Well, Messi not doing well at the World Cup. People are quite concerned that even without a great year, it still wouldn't be enough. He still won the Ballon d'Or. The iconic image of the top three all being Barcelona players. Andres Iniesta in second and Xavi in third. Messi beating Iniesta by only 5% of vote, which is a relatively narrow margin. This, of course, was record-breaking, of course. The first ever youth academy to have three finalists at Ballon d'Or the same year. Three La Masia Barcelona products in the top three of the Ballon d'Or is extraordinary. So despite a pretty poor World Cup, Maybe Messi would have a year off. <laughs> he didn't. I get no he scored more goals, actually, um, and won a Champions League. 31 goals and 21 assists in the league in 33 games. By the way, throughout all of this, I've never actually spoke about how Messi played, because I don't really need to, as you already know. But Messi is pure gold dust. I mean... As a footballer, even now to this very day, or when he's now hitting, you know, late age of his career, he is absolutely a joy and a pleasure to watch. Not only is he an absolute genius when it comes to his positional play, when it comes to his creativity, he's a goal scoring machine. The chances that he creates is also incredible. It makes you think how many goals he could score if he didn't keep setting people up. This unselfishness of Lionel Messi, alongside his other amazing goal scoring stats, this is what makes Messi so different from the rest, because he can literally do everything. 13 games played in Champions League and scoring 12 goals. And how did he do in Champions League? Yeah, he won that. 13 games played in Champions League, scoring 12 goals. Real Madrid beat Barcelona in the Champions League semi-finals. And he bagged two goals at the Santiago Bernabeu iconic incredible manchester united back in the final and he scored again in the league i mean he's playing against almira and zaragoza and mallorca and asasuna and 
Espan is having fun. Two goal contribution, three goal contribution, three goal contribution, two goal contribution, five goal contribution, two, three, two, three, three, one, two, two, three, one. You can't stop him. He's incredible. They won La Liga. They won the Champions League. They're gonna do the treble. However, Real Madrid had something to say about that. Losing in extra time in the finals of Real Madrid, who scored the winner? Cristiano Ronaldo. So despite Messi getting one up in the Champions League semi-finals, Ronaldo and Real Madrid did have one final laugh here. Winning the Copa del Rey and also stopping them from winning the treble. The Copa America also came round and with no goals in the competition and getting knocked out by Uruguay in the quarterfinals. It was already at these early stages in Messi's career at Argentina that people started doubting his ability to make an impact for the national team as this was a couple of tournaments now that he's not really performed. Other than, of course, the youth and the Olympics, they care about at least the Cup America and the World Cup. That's what Argentines really care about. And that is now the World Cup 2010 and also 2011 Cup America with no goals. They did go far in the 2007 Cup America, to be fair, and he did score three goals then. However, Argentina didn't win, so they kind of didn't care. And he also lost 3-0 to Brazil in the final. However, none of this stopped Messi from winning yet again another Ballon d'Or, making it now three for the man. Messi now has to slow down at some stage. You know, he's got to. He absolutely has to. I get down, I get what the f 50 goals in the league. 73 goals in 60 games, 73 goals in one season, 11 games in the Champions League, 14 goals. With also, by the way, 73 goals and 32 assists, it's, it's not just goals, that is 105 goal contributions in 60 games. It was at this moment that people... They knew that they had a, a an, an all-timer immediately there. Like, he's already the best player to ever grace the game. Already in 2012, if Messi played a game of football and didn't at least contribute three goals, then it was a weird night. Scoring five goals in one game in the Champions League last 16 against Bayer Leverkusen, they won 7-1. However, they did get knocked out by Chelsea at the new Camp. Do I need to say it? Okay, let me <clears throat> let me prepare myself. Oh! That was actually a pretty good impression, actually. Uh, yeah, so Torres happened. Christ, that was actually a really good impression. I'm sorry for your ears. I, I, I am sorry. I mean, in the background of this video, you have just got, like, his goals just going on and... He's just, he's just insane, isn't he? 2011-12, second place in La Liga. Real Madrid, of course, winning. Winning Copa del Rey and the Super Cup and the Club World Cup. But did they really care? Probably kind of. They didn't win La Liga and the Champions League. So that is really what mattered. Messi scoring 50 goals in one season is absolutely dumb. Also, this was the last season at... Barcelona for Pep Guardiola. And Messi would meet a certain Brazilian in the Club World Cup, Fiat Santos. You may have heard of him, Neymar. We're kind of queuing what's going to happen in the future here, but I think you know, I think you get the gist. Now I can go through these years step by step, but they, they kind of get more dumb. Um, so that was his best year ever in terms of La Liga goals and goals in one year. The next year, only, you know, only 60, which is like nothing. 60 goals, 17 assists, and he played primarily as a center forward this entire time. He's now changed to a center forward. The team at the stage was Valdez, Alves, Mascarano, Pique, Abidal with the midfield three, of course, as Busquets, Javi, Niesta, and front three of David Villa, Messi, and Pedro, if you're wondering what this team was. I know Celtic fans may be waiting for this moment, but um, Celtic did beat Barcelona in this year, so there's that. Barcelona was top of La Liga for pretty much the entire season, and they won the league relatively comfortably. I say relatively, they won by 15 points, so, you know, not relatively at all. Oh, yeah, Ballon d'Or, who won that? Yeah, Messi, and you're not surprised. Who came second? Yeah, Ronaldo, you're not surprised. The head coach was Tito Villanova, and they won La Liga, but got knocked out of the Champions League yet again. They were knocked out by Bayern Munich and Messi were indeed on the bench for that semi-final second leg. A 4-0 thrashing at the Allianz Arena to Bayern Munich and a 3-0 loss to Bayern Munich at the Nou Camp 
when Messi was not able to play that second game. A 7-0 loss on aggregate. And can I just talk about the El Clasicals? I mean, this was just beautiful. I mean, 2-2, Real Madrid beat Barcelona at the new Camp. And of course, it's two goals off Ronaldo. It's two goals off Messi. This was just peak football. Iniesta, Messi, Alexis Sanchez at a time with Cristiano Ronaldo, Ozil, Di Maria, Benzema. I mean, it's just... Oh, this was also the year that Messi scored 91 goals in a calendar year in 2012. 91 goals in a single calendar year. 91. That will never be beat. I, I don't care about Haaland. He's amazing, but he's never getting 91 goals in one calendar year. Let me Google how many he's on right now. Uh, yeah, we're fine. Did Messi win the Ballon d'Or? Yes. He did. Messi won four Ballon d'Ors in a row. However, the next season, it was actually Ronaldo's time. The 2013 FIFA Ballon d'Or and Ronaldo won it. And it was a close, close margin. Only 3% separated Ronaldo and Messi. And third place was Frank Ribéry, who people still think to this day was kind of disrespected in only being third place. I mean, in that year, he won everything that could have been won. 13-14, 41 goals, 14 assists, which, which actually looks like quite a poor year in comparison to Messi's standards, which kind of shows how insane he is. Knocked out of the Champions League by Atletico Madrid, however, showing his class against Man City. And in this year, having one of the greatest ever all-time performances in a El Clasico, 4-3 at the Santiago Bernabeu, three goals, a hat-trick, and an assist to win the game. Barcelona had a fun player called Neymar now there, and um, Real Madrid also had Bale too. But it's the 2013-14 year, and now it is time for the World Cup. 2010 was pretty poor. You know, it didn't score any goals. Got one assist, I believe, but knocked out pretty poorly by Germany. You know, you know where I'm getting at here. His group is Bosnia and Herzegovina, Iran, and Nigeria. I swear they always have Nigeria in a group stage. I don't know why. Surely now Messi has to step up. And he did, for the start at least. One goal against Bosnia, you already know the goal. Iran, last minute winner, you already know the goal. And Nigeria, two goals. So four goals in the first three games. Messi is here at the World Cup. Switzerland, ran a 16, got an assist. Belgium, quarterfinals. They won, but no contributions. Netherlands, semi-finals, all the way to penalties. And it got through. However, no contributions, and now the final. The entirety of Argentina rests on the shoulders of Lionel Messi, dragging a Argentine team that people think was probably not that good to be here in the first place. And of course, uh, got sir, happened. Messi was so close to winning a World Cup for Argentina, and people yet again was questioning where was he at the big occasion. He had a 1v1, a big moment in that final, and he dragged it wide from a crossbody shot. And people were actually started to question, thinking, you know what, Messi, he may have a weak spot here in the big games. Despite all the big moments he's already had, for Argentina, it seemed to be different when he played for Barcelona. And people were seriously questioning his ability to lead the Argentine national team. Despite the fact they were in a final, questions were already being asked. I, rem I remember this very well. 14-15, Luis Suarez got signed. Neymar was also already there. You know what happened. M. S. N. No, not the application. Messi, Suarez, Neymar. The all-time, in my opinion, I think, in everyone's opinion, the best front three in world, in world history. 57 games played, 58 goals and 31 assists. Champs League, 10 goals in the Champs League. And, of course, they won the Champs League, knocking out City, PSG, Bayern Munich, and, of course, beating Juventus in the final. La Liga, did they win it? Of course they did. It's... MSN, Copa del Rey, did they win it? Yes, they did. They did the treble, okay? It was a great year. Luis Enrique at the helm. It was a fantastic year for Barcelona. Ignore the 3-1 defeat to Real Madrid at the Nou Camp. Oh, it was a great year all around. At this stage, I've been praising Messi for what seems like an hour. However, then came the Copa America 2015. And still with something to prove after that loss to Germany in the World Cup final. Copa America 2015, Group Paraguay, Uruguay, and Jamaica. Only one goal in the group stage against Paraguay. Quarterfinals, Colombia. Just going through on penalties with no contribution. Semi-final, Paraguay. 6-1 win. No goals, but three assists. That's fine. The final. It's not Brazil. It's not Brazil? In a Copa America final? 
It's Argentina v Chile. I mean, come on, this is an obvious win for Argentina. Messi in the best form, in his peak of his powers, he's at a prime age, and this has to be an easy win. And Paraguay knocking out Brazil, I mean, they did their job for them. Chile beat Argentina on penalties. They dragged it to 0-0, Messi scored his penalty, however, Higuain... Ah, I need to talk about Higuain. So Higuain is a meme in Argentine culture, or I mean really football culture, that basically... He's the... He's basically one of the reasons why Messi never won anything. Missing penalties, missing uh, clear opportunities in World Cup finals. Higuain, if he just, you know, um, did his job. It could have been a different story for Messi in his early Argentine career. Alexis Sanchez puts the ball in the back of the net in the penalty shootout, and Messi couldn't get Argentine silverware when it really mattered yet again. Of course, all the blame can't go on Messi, but it's, try telling the media that and the Argentines. Feel free, type up 2015 Copa America final now, just Google it, and like all of the articles is just an image of Messi looking sad. Lionel Messi slammed by Diego Maradona after Copa America failure. Leo has no chance of ending goat debate with this Argentina. Messi's family attacked in the stands as Argentina are beaten by Chile. The consensus was there with the Argentines that Messi can be doing all this amazing stuff for Barcelona, but if he's not doing it for Argentina, then they don't care. That stuck with Messi for his entire career. 15-16, MSA still thriving, still having fun. Did they have fun? Yes, they did. Ding, ding, ding. Ballon d'Or update. Sorry, I kind of missed out. Um, so Ronaldo won in the 2014 Ballon d'Or. So Messi missed out on that year. Ronaldo won by a a, a landslide by over 20 percent. He dominated this year. However, in 2015, Messi got back again with his fifth Ballon d'Or with a large margin, 14 percent to Ronaldo in second place and third place is a certain man called Neymar, with an iconic front three of Messi, Ronaldo and Neymar, and it looked like Neymar was bound to get a Ballon d'Or eventually, when Messi and Ronaldo slowed down. Issue is, that never happened. Messi's 15-16 year was a bit of a, a lackluster year for Messi. I mean, it's not really lacking. I mean, 26 goals and 16 assists and 33 games, it's still amazing. But for Messi, this... Like, for any other footballer now, that's like a great year. Like, Mbappe gets that now. Fantastic year. Haaland still. But for Messi, this was, seen, this was seen as a bit of like, oh, okay, something may be off here. Which, looking back, in reality, is just mental. But it was a bad year all round. Knocked out in the quarterfinals of the Champions League by Atleti. And, of course, due to this, Ronaldo won the Ballon d'Or as he did also get the Euro 2016 final win as well. And he won by a massive margin, by over 400 points. So, I don't really understand Copa Americas. They just seem to kind of just happen. Um, so, this was back-to-back Copa Americas, as they had Copa America 2015 and then 16, for some reason. I, I, there's a reason why, but I, 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 can't, I can't be asked Googling it. Group stage, Chile, Panama and Bolivia. They beat Chile, but Messi didn't play. Panama, three goals, great. Bolivia, they won. But no goals, not great. Venezuela, three goal contributions. Semi-finals, USA, three goal contributions. The final. Oh god, it's Chile again. Oh god, it's gone to penalties again. Oh god, they've lost to Chile again. Back to back years, Argentina lost to Chile. The memes were sensation and painful at the same time. The famous image of Aleta Sanchez over the shoulder of Messi, that happened. It felt genuinely like Messi was cursed to never win for, for Argentina. In three years, Messi lost back to back to back finals. With each final, Messi not contributing a goal and assist. People seriously started doubting Messi. It also made it worse that Messi missed his penalty in a shootout as well. This hit Messi so hard that he actually retired from Argentina. I remember this moment exactly. It was huge. Messi retiring from Argentina. And he was still, you know, at a very good age. People thinking that this was due to just him being emotional. Losing back to back to back finals in three years is going to be really tough. However, this is still something to Argentinians. Some still hold a grudge to, even to this day. Saying that Lionel Messi simply quit on his country. Of course, as we all know now, he came back to the Argentine national team. However, this still kind of stuck for a bit. So 16, 17, and Messi is now reaching the later part of his years. He's now 30, and 
people start seeing him a bit differently. He bounced back to a good year, 54 goals and 20 assists in 52 games, great year. Knocked out by Juventus in the Champions League, that was a, a rather big shame. And of course, how can I forget the La Remontada? I think that's how you say it, probably not. Which means a comeback in Spanish. This was really caused by Neymar, but this was a great night and a great game to just look back on. However, failing to win La Liga, they won the Copa del Rey, but not winning Champions League. It was a relatively poor year for Barcelona. Because, well, if you don't win La Liga Champions League, people just kind of just don't care. The Ballon d'Or was won by Ronaldo yet again, and Messi gone quite a few years without winning Ballon d'Or. After winning four in a row, he went only one Ballon d'Or win in six years. Messi only winning one Ballon d'Or in six years at his, you know, at his time was his kind of his peak years. He was in his late 20s. People were kind of concerned that maybe he wouldn't win it for a while again. Keep in mind, at one stage, Ronaldo hit five Ballon d'Ors, and so did Messi at the same time. This was... In insanity. And in 2017, they both shared five Ballon d'Ors. 17-18 came around and, you know, another great year. 45 goals, 20 assists. It's kind of boring to say now, but it's still fun to say because Jesus Christ, that is insanity. However, this is when the Barcelona team started looking a bit different. Neymar, of course, joined Barcelona to join PSG. Barca had Suarez and Messi, but Iniesta and Busquets were getting on in a back four of um, Titi and Nelson Semedo. It was a bit of a, a confusing time. I mean, on the bench, they were looking at Paco Alcacer and um, Andre Gomez, Thomas Vermaelen, and they got knocked out in one of the most dramatic ways imaginable. After beating Roma 4-1, they lost 3-0 in Rome and were knocked out in dramatic circumstances. La Liga, they won. Copa del Rey, they won. So that's okay. And of course, it's 2018. And of course, they got Nigeria in the group again. Seriously, what's with Nigeria and Argentina? That's like four World Cups in a row. Iceland, Croatia, and Nigeria, one goal in the groups. And they, they were at a serious scale of being knocked out in the group stage. Drawing to Iceland, losing 3-0 to Croatia. I mean, just beating Nigeria 2-1. I mean, they were at a serious, serious problem. And they had another big problem. Because, hey, here's France. This was seen as the World Cup of World Cups. As with both Messi and Ronaldo... Hitting an older age, I mean, they're like in their early 30s at this time, with both and five Ballon d'Ors, this could be the be all and end all. This was seen to finish the GOAT debate. And it all kind of became a bit eh for these two, as Portugal and Argentina were knocked out on the same day, with Uruguay knocking out Portugal thanks to Cavani and Kylian Mbappe ending off Argentina 4-3 in the round of 16. I will never forget this day that both Messi and Ronaldo were knocked out in the same day. Oh, that made the World Cup instantly worse. I'm sorry. Even with England going to semi-finals, that, that, that still made it just worse. The 2018 Ballon d'Or was always seen to be the decider between Ronaldo and Messi, and it came out to be Luka Modric by a vast, vast margin, winning the Ballon d'Or instead. Messi came fifth behind Antoine Griezmann, Kylian Mbappe, and Ronaldo. 18-19, 51 goals in 50 games, 22 assists. Barcelona, they're back. Oh no, it's Diva Carigi. Messi with a fantastic performance against Manchester United at Nou Camp. Messi with a fantastic performance against Liverpool at Nou Camp. 3-0 up in the first leg. How did you bottle this? With Spurs waiting in the final, Liverpool won 4-0 to finish one of the greatest comebacks in Champions League history. And that makes it now two times in a row that Barcelona completely collapsed in the Champions League to, after a comeback to Roma and a comeback to Liverpool. The Xavi's, Iniesta's, the PK's, they're not the same or they're gone. Yes, they won La Liga, but something felt off for this team. That team that played against Liverpool, they had Coutinho, Vidal, Rakitic, Lenglet and Sergio Roberto, they were subbing on Malcolm and Arthur Melo. They had some key players, but it was relatively a weaker team. And they lost 4-0 to Liverpool, missing two of their best players in Firmino and Salah. And despite Liverpool winning the Champions League, it all came to Messi v Van Dijk for Ballon d'Or. I remember this very well, that people were convinced that Van Dijk had to win. I mean, he had to win. Winning Champions League, fantastic year at Liverpool. Didn't win the Premier League, however, was a massive part of that Liverpool team and why they got so far. And Messi won the Ballon d'Or by seven points. His sixth Ballon d'Or. To this day, people still believe that that was a very lucky Ballon d'Or to win. Give me your thoughts down below on that one. 1920.
Ugh. Now I'm feeling sad. All right, shall I just skip and just go straight to the bad part? Yeah, yeah. eight, two. I don't need to, I don't need to, I don't, I, yeah, God, I don't need to say anymore. Um, COVID happened, of course, and <laughs> they lost 8-2 to Bayern Munich. 7-1 Brazil v Germany was pretty, it was pretty tough, but this was just like watching your, your dad get beat up. This game felt like the end for Messi at Barcelona. Like, even, even though he left like a year later, this felt like the end completely. That Barcelona team was very much disgraced. Continuing at Barcelona in the 2021 season, 38 goals, 14 assists in 47 games, very decent. Not tapped by PSG in a convincing fashion, losing 4-1. 4-1 at New Camp. Third place in La Liga as well. They did win the Copa del Rey, so at least there's that. But who cares? Because it's the Copa America. Messi is reaching an age where he doesn't have many more competitions left. This could be his last Copa America. This this could be it. Coming up to the tournament, Argentina has not lost in almost two years. In their groups, Chile, Uruguay, Paraguay, Bolivia, and they got Messi finally scored against Chile in a major competition. However, they still drew. Uruguay, they beat. Paraguay, they beat. Bolivia, of course they beat. Quarterfinals, Ecuador, three goal contributions. Okay, let's go. Semi-finals, Colombia, one assist. Beat them on penalties. Okay. In the final, it's not Chile. No, no, it's not. It is Brazil. Argentina, beat Brazil. Messi, beat Neymar. Oh, boy, this was a... Big, big match. Looking back on what's happened since, we can't underestimate how big this game was and what could have happened afterwards. Despite Messi not scoring in that final, Di Maria did. And Argentina finally won major silverware under Lionel Messi. The celebrations, the emotions that came from this game, you can feel it just from watching on TV what it meant to the players. And the players, they knew how much it meant to Messi. Years, over a decade of scrutiny from the Argentine fans. So next year, Messi's Barcelona year. Wait, there's a problem here. So Messi is now at PSG. Yeah, let's talk about that. This was astonishing to the football world as Messi not playing at Barcelona just felt like something you would ever only see on Football Manager. This was rather complex and still looking back is quite a complicated situation. Barcelona completely fumbled the bag, essentially. Barcelona had significant financial difficulties due to incredible, just stupid spending on salaries and transfer fees on the likes of Coutinho and Usman Dembele and many more as well, including uh, wages and the likes of Lionel Messi. Added on top the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic impact that caused, it was completely unsustainable. And something called the La Liga salary cap or financial fair play got in the way. This meant that Messi's contract was winning out and they couldn't renew it. Many people still look back on this thinking, why didn't Messi just play at a lower contract? Because it's not like he's poor. And people still question him for this to this day. Thinking if he loved Barcelona so much, why wouldn't he play for less money? On August 5th, 2021, Barcelona held a press conference that Messi confirmed he's leaving the club. The world blew up. Where the hell would Messi go? And really, there's only two, three options. And the main one, in terms of who can actually afford him, was PSG. The, the, the other being Manchester City who of course had Pep Guardiola. Let's just say thank God he didn't join Man City because then we'd be all screwed. PSG signed Lionel Messi and PSG had a front three of Mbappe, Neymar and Messi. He's gonna score so many goals in Liga and it's gonna be a complete demolish and I can't wait. He's, he may score 60, he may score 70, it's gonna be so easy. He scored six. Um. Yeah, he scored six goals for, 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 for in League Hun. A bit of a shock. I remember it very well that people were just completely astonished by the fact that Messi only scored six goals in League Hun and he went many games for PSG, not even scoring a single goal. In his first 15, 20 games, he only ever scored two goals. He was creating assists along the way and had 15 assists, but 
People didn't care. He did score five goals in seven games in the Champions League, and he did indeed get a big goal against Man City that people may remember quite iconic now, but lost out to Real Madrid at the Santiago Bernabeu. However, despite all of this, he still won his seventh Ballon d'Or, and controversially ahead the likes of a Robert Lewandowski. People believing that Lewandowski was very unfortunate to not win it, considering the fact that he really should have won it back in 2020 when Bayern Munich won the Champions League and he had a fantastic year. People are quite annoyed by the fact that Messi won yet again, despite having a very poor year in league 1 so far. 22-23, Messi played like Messi a bit more this year. 16 goals and 16 assists, but he was indeed getting booed by PSG fans, which is just disgusting. How can you boo Lionel Messi? How? PSG weren't doing the greatest. They got knocked out by Bayern Munich in the last 16, and in Liga, and they weren't having the greatest of years, but he still won, you know, convincingly still, but not out in the Coupe de France against Marseille. People are quite concerned about that. It all ended quite poorly with Messi. It's quite sad to look back on, really. However, something happened halfway through this year, which I think is, you know, relatively important to mention. The World Cup in Qatar. Some people may not like this because it's Qatar and people already have their thoughts about Qatar and their reasons of hosting a World Cup, but when you look back on it, is this one of the best ever World Cups? Tell me down below. This was all but guaranteed to be Messi's last World Cup as he's 35 and by the time the next World Cup comes around, he would be pretty old. You know, 38, would he still be the same player? You never know. This could be the B.O. and end of Lionel Messi. And they played Saudi Arabia and they went 1-0 up. Messi, scoring a penalty, should be an easy win. They lost. Argentina did not lose a single game of competitive football for three years and then lost to Saudi Arabia, bro. Oh my god, the timeline was just chaos. People were convinced that Mexico were gonna knock out Argentina. They didn't. Messi scored and assisted, and then they had to go and beat Poland. Argentina still won 2-0. And then they had Australia. Messi scored a great goal, and he won 2-1. Quarterfinals, Netherlands, a goal and an assist. A fantastic, oh, talk about that assist. How did he pass that ball? Semi-finals, Croatia, who, destroyed Argentina in the previous World Cup. 3-0, Messi with a goal and an assist, and an incredible assist yet again. Argentina are in a final, and it's France. The holders, Mbappe beat Messi, and what happened was by far the greatest World Cup final, maybe even the greatest game of football in the history of the sport. And then Mbappe scores two in a matter of two minutes, and it goes to extra time and it ends 3-3. Mbappe hat-trick in the final. Messi scoring two. Penalty shootout came. And there was no Higuain. After losing the 2014 World Cup final. After being knocked out by France in 2018. France came again. And they won the FIFA World Cup. Messi has won the FIFA World Cup. And Messi all but confirmed his name as the greatest of all time. Now, people, I, I doubt Ronaldo fans are still watching as far in, but people still like to say that the fact that this was a rigged tournament because Argentina had many penalties. All I can say is, you're stupid. The little boy from Rosario Santa Fe has just pitched up in heaven. He climbs into a galaxy of his own. He has his crowning moment. And of course, he is not alone. Of course, now Messi has gone from PSG and is now playing in America for Inter Miami. And Inter Miami, before he joined, was, I'm pretty sure, dead last or like second last in the entire TDMLS. In his first 11 games for Inter Miami, he scored 11 goals and 5 assists. And winning the League's Cup, so already getting silverware, twice in the Open Cup and League's Cup. There could be a good chance that Messi could go on and get Inter Miami to the playoffs. And that will be a lot of fun to watch. I think I'm going to end the video here. Um, this is the entire history of Messi. Um, the greatest of all time. I don't think I need to say that. You already know. But good lord, this player is stupid. Stupid good. We already know this. But wow. Um, I, I can't really explain really why. You just know. 
I don't think there'll be a player as good as him. And you got Mbappe and Haaland now, but neither are both anywhere near at Messi's level in terms of how he played, his creativity, his dribbling, his finishing, his decision making, everything. None comes close. Ronaldo is, of course, by far up there. These two are the top two of all time. No one else comes close, in my opinion, for the longevity alone is insanity. So, this by no means is a disrespect to Ronaldo. These two are the greatest to ever play the sport. But Messi, he's got something a bit extra. So, thank you for watching this far. Smash the like button, subscribe. It's a long video, but I enjoyed making it. And I'll see you next time. See ya.